Okay, good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome back after the break. Uh, so we're carrying on with um, some interesting uh, academic track uh, presentations. Uh, the following two look specifically at how communities are involved in mapping an open street map. And I'm dialing in, I'm Serena Kutsi, I'm uh, uh, dialing in today from South Africa. And we were looking very much forward to having all of you in South Africa for these this weekend. So um, the rest is history, things changed. Um, and as you can see, despite the fact that I have a fan behind me, it's winter here. So maybe those of you dialing in from the northern parts of the world, uh, you definitely have better weather than the cold winter weather that we have here. Um, so we're going to have a presentation that's streamed live. Afterwards, we will do um, questions. You can post your questions on a pad. It's available in the conference program. So if you go in the conference program, click on the presentation that we're looking at now, and then there's a link to the pad where you can ask, uh, add your questions and we'll look at that um, afterwards. So I would like to introduce to you um, Dixon Chengu from Malawi. He is a lecturer there at the University of Malawi. His background is in information technology, but he's been doing community mapping since 2014. So that's quite a long time. And this has sparked his interest in um, community mapping. Uh, so he's currently also pursuing further studies in this regard uh, at the Ardi University in Tanzania. And apart from all those things, he's also the administrator for the Malawi Spatial Data Portal, NASDA. So I'd like to uh, hand over to uh, the video streaming team so that we can uh, have a look at uh, Dixon's presentation. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, people. My name is Dixon Chingro, and I'll be presenting on this uh, research that I took, uh, we undertook, me and my colleague, Brown Impalo. Uh, the title of this presentation, or rather the research that we undertook, is Community Mapping as a Means to Building Resilience. Uh, the background to it is that uh, Malawi is a country that is uh, affected by natural hazards. Uh, there are a number of natural hazards that uh, the country is affected it's affected with. We've got uh, strong winds, earthquakes, floods, even droughts. But these uh, hazards, they threaten people, property, as well as the economy of the country. It has been noted that within the past 36 years or so, the country experienced eight major droughts, of which 24 million people were affected. And of late, one of the major the uh, hazard that affected the country is a 500-year flood in 2015, which affected more than 1.1 million people. Hence, this prompted us to carry out this research. Uh, so the aim of this research was to collect uh, exposure data, which was going to be used to create uh, uh, flood risk maps which in return will create uh, an atlas for flood prone areas. So the problem that there is at the moment is that communities as well as the country is uh, affected negatively socially as well as, as economically due to these uh, real currency floods. So we had set up our objectives which were to guide us in carrying out the research. The first was to identify critical flood prone areas within the country because almost every year there are floods that do occur. So I said how can we identify the critical flood prone areas. Having done that is to categorize now affected infrastructures within these critical flood prone areas. And then uh, having uh, categorized those, then to do the actual mapping of the flood prone areas of which in return or at the end, 
where to develop or we develop an atlas of the critical flood prone areas. So in carrying out this research or other project, we needed to use some data, which we divided it into two, we had the primary data as well as the secondary data. And the primary data, we're looking at exposure data. This exposure data, we collected the geolocation by use of handheld GPSs, which had a minimum of the three meter accuracy. So basically, what is it that we're looking at exposure data? Or what is it that we're collected? Uh, we're looking at the locations of buildings, toilets, roads, bridges, schools, among other things. But uh, the buildings that we're looking at, uh, we're looking at dwelling houses, or shops, if clinics were available within the area, so on and so forth. And we further went down to categorize the buildings into three, more especially the dwelling houses into three, we were looking at uh, a permanent structure or a permanent dwelling house, and looking at a semi-permanent dwelling house, as well as a temporary dwelling house. This, uh, we are mindful of uh, the materials that have been used in putting up these dwelling houses. That's why we had these three categories. The secondary data, we're looking at, uh, we, call, we used the Malawi Disaster Profile Database. Uh, this uh, database, we collected it from the Department of uh, Disaster and Management Affairs. Uh, since we do experience these hazards, or we do experience these disasters almost yearly. Uh, the Department of Disaster and Management Affairs keep records of where these occurrences happened. Uh, so we got, we used that data as a secondary data to help, help us to locate where the places that we could go and do the mapping. Uh, on the other hand, we also involved in the communities because they are the ones that are affected. Having looked at the disaster profile, we went down to the communities just to verify if these disasters still happen. So, so communities played a major role in providing us with data and also guidance in the areas of where we are going to do the mapping. Uh, aside the the data that we used, we also had supporting applications or software that enable us to create the maps and the atlas. Uh, we used the Java OpenStreetMap application, which is JOSOM. Uh, this enabled us to digitize the exposure data that we collected from the fields. Uh, so we had these overlying with the satellite imagery, then upload it into OpenStreetMap. Also, we used InnerSafe, which is an extension with it, the QGIS, which provided us with the statistics that enables us to run some analysis on uh, the information that we collected. So, how did we go about collecting the data? First and foremost, we did some workshops. Uh, these workshops, we had different participants with the different backgrounds or different fields of study. We had um, surveyors, cartographers, IT personnel, water resource management managers. Uh, we needed a vast uh, group of people to help us in carrying out uh, this uh, project. Uh, on top of that, we also included some community leaders who helped us, who helped us in uh, identifying the areas that we're going to do the mapping. So within the workshops, uh, basically we are training each other on how to use 
the GPS, and also how to use the JOSAM in doing the digitization. So as you can see from the slides, uh, a few of our, our colleagues actually taking coordinates of affected buildings within the flood prone areas using the GPSs. So by the end of it, all, having collected all this exposure data, we did the digitization using JOSOM and uploaded it through OSL. Well, what has been the findings and the outcomes? Well, when we looked at the disaster profile, or rather the databases, and also when we consulted with the communities, we noted that there are about 15 of the 28 districts in Malawi that are affected by floods. Well, these 15, it's not that all of them are the critical, but uh, there are some critical districts that are also affected by floods. Also, we noted on the ground that there's been little interventions in reducing the root cause of floods. Uh, here are some of the reasons that we also noted, which are the root cause of floods, despite that at times we have heavy rainfalls, but also some of the reasons are siltation in rivers. How situation in rivers is coming about? Well, it's been attributed to unwanted cutting down of trees, which leaves the grounds bare. So when the water, when the rain comes, uh, silt is washed into the rivers, causing the riverbeds to rise. Hence, at the end of it, all floods do occur. Also, we noted that there are some other communities which still live in low-lying areas, more especially uh, the southern part of Malawi. Uh, well, the reason they still live in these areas, they claim that those are fatal soils. Some are uh, saying they can't move out of there because they have nowhere to go. This is only land which they are uh, my sisters, or rather their folks left to them. And uh, the other thing that we also noted is that there's a lack of knowledge and uh, on the information, lack of knowledge and information on disaster, disaster risk management. Uh, so there is need to educate the communities on how best they can manage disaster. Now, some of the outcomes from our research or the project that we undertook is the creation of maps. These maps actually highlight statistics showing uh, the exposure data that we collected in areas that we mapped. Basically, it will show things like how many households would be affected when floods come how many people would be affected, which are infrastructures would be affected when floods do occur. So this information is uh, basically useful to the government as well as the communities themselves. If they know how many households will be affected, how many people will be affected, the infrastructure will be affected. If they also wanted to do developmental projects, they should know which areas are ideal to do these projects and which areas are ideal not to do these projects. So, and also if they wanted to relocate people, where can they be relocated if floods do occur? Or probably to permanently move them from areas that are prone to floods. Uh, having done this, there have been some lessons learned when we are doing this uh, research. Uh, one of the major lessons was uh, how best to do community mapping in Malawi. Uh, as I've already said, we needed the involvement of the communities to help us in identifying which areas really do get affected by floods. Although there's this, uh, the disaster profile of the database from Dodma, but still more, 
the community on the ground are the ones that know most on how they are affected. So best practices whereby you will engage the community in doing your mapping. Uh, from here, we've, the research had also some contributions like sharing of spatial data on SM and also Malai Spatial Data Platform Mazda. Uh, well, the sharing is free on either of the platform, either for decision or making. Probably some other people wanted to do some other projects with information on there. And it's also helping the academicians when they are pursuing their academic uh, programs. And uh, lastly, we had to create flood disaster atlas for Malawi. Uh, basically, this is to enable those people in decision making when they are carrying out decisions on helping the communities if you want if they want to do development projects and any other need that they would want to use the atlases for anyway thank you for your attention uh, if you have questions it's time for questions thank you Thank you, uh, Dixon. Um, have we lost Dixon? Um, I see he's been in and out of this uh, Jitsi room. It looks like he is uh, not here. Okay, so let's do a bit of a discussion. Uh, maybe some people who are on the pad can ask, can uh, post their questions there and also some answers. Um, so maybe from those who are in the pad, uh, if you can post some comments um, about why one would use um, OpenStreetMap, uh, if you could also just use equipment like GPSs and handheld phones and field papers and things like that um, to capture data uh, and do it in QGIS. Um, what do you think are the benefits um, of doing this with OpenStreetMap? I see people are, are typing. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, privacy issues regarding uploading collected data on OpenStreetMap platform. But I think um, answering for Dixon here because he, he's not on the call, um, I think it was all kinds of bridges, um, buildings, rivers. So I don't think there was much information that was private, apart maybe from the buildings and the occupants. Dixon, I see you are back. Can can you hear me? We had a question about the privacy, whether you, there were any privacy issues when you uploaded the data that the communities had collected. Uh, no. Uh, there weren't any private issues because basically the data that we are collecting it was just uh, spatial data. We weren't collecting any human identifiable data. Okay. So basically there weren't any privacy issues that we encountered. So people were happy that the, their buildings and I think you talked about toilets and so on. So they didn't have an issue about those things being made available on something like OpenStreetMap? No. Yeah. Uh, reason being, uh, the context for those structures, it wasn't pointing out to whose place this is. So it was just a coordinate of there's a house here, this is what is there on the ground, and we're just uploading it uh, to the OSM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a comment here, I'm not sure whether you're looking at the pair, Dixon, also about um, how this highlights the importance of locally relevant data. and. Uh, 
involving the communities. And I, I was also worry, wondering about that. Do you think by involving the community, there was already, you talked about that there's a need to educate communities. Do you think the involvement of them in collecting the data has helped them to understand a bit more about what they should, how the, or what should be done in the case of a disaster or to prevent disasters? Uh, basically, what we are trying to do is to help the community themselves. So, sure, indeed, they, they found it uh, important and very helpful to them. Because what we are looking at is uh, when disaster comes, uh, the other thing is to allocate which areas they'll move to. But also, since they'll be concerned uh, with the development, as I've already said, is to advise them saying these areas are not good for further developments because every year, year in, year out, you'll be facing these problems. So I'm uh, sure indeed uh, it was nice having them involved and also have uh, an agreement on how best they can move on after what we have done. So. There's a question, yeah, also about the future direction for this research. So is it complete or where, where are you heading now? Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Well, I can't say it's complete. Mm -hmm. uh, with the passage of time, you find people going back to the same old places. So because what needs to be done now is government to set up policies. As I've already said, saying out of this, we hand it over to the government so that they can come up with policies. Uh, I already know there's one policy of uh, building better houses, something like that, saying in areas that are more prone to disasters and where people can't move to any highland, there should be a standard house that they can build so that it should not be affected with floods. So what's remaining, it's a follow-up on what we have done, is it being implemented or not? Yeah. Yes. I, I was also wondering, um, before uh, before you could hear me, why you decided to use OpenStreetMap and the OpenStreetMap tools. If you could do the same exercise in something like QGIS and, and all kinds of other tools, why, why particularly did you use OpenStreetMap? Uh, basically, we are looking at sharing because Basically, a number of organizations will come into it. I know there are some other NGOs in Malawi that are also interested in the same things. There are projects that are run. So if we have it already on OpenStreetMap, they can just put, put down the data and use it, rather than just having it, uh, own, owning it without sharing it. Yeah. So the idea behind was to share the data. Yeah, so then that, that becomes um, available. And then um, I think you mentioned the equipment that they went out with. So did they also do some remote mapping based on uh, satellite imagery? No, that, that wasn't done. That wasn't part of the, the project. And then I see there's another question on the pad about the Malawi platform for spatial data. Can you uh -huh. um, say a bit about that? Uh, okay, the Mazda. It's uh, more of a local repository for spatial data. Uh, in the same realm or domain whereby we want to share spatial data in Malawi for further projects or even for studies. It's accessible to anyone. What, what, what you, one needs to do is just to go on the site. It's uh, www.masdap.mw. Uh, you fill a form whereby it's sent to an administrator, then they approve you, then you can start using it. Basically, that's what it's, that's what is there. So you find like a special data, like for the floods, we are trying to put up uh, probably health facilities, schools, things like that, even agricultural areas. So it's accessible to anyone. Okay, thank yeah. you. And then, um, there were two questions. The one, uh, well, the one is the comment about this data now being available to the wide community, and 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 there's a question about whether this project can be used for vaccination purposes. 
So I guess the question, those two things are a bit related. Now that the data is available on OpenStreetMap, do you think it could be used for vaccination? Sorry, for vaccination? Yeah, I, I assume for planning vaccination. Maybe the person who asked that question can just elaborate on what they mean by vaccination. Yeah, I think uh, we need more clarification on that. Because, uh... Okay, let's see if he adds something else to this question. I was wondering, um, so it, it sounds like you did 28 districts, am I right? Uh, no, we did uh, 15. 15. Out of 28. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. equally, it's, because, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has been done over a period of time. It's not just uh, probably a month or two. No, it has been done over a period of time. So, so if you could share some of the lessons learned and the good practices that you talked about, how I mean, how do you find community members? How do you, how do you organize that whole community exercise? Uh, if you check in the write up or in the presentation, we talk of workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, there are teams that will, are involved. We have cartographers, we've got uh, academicians like myself, uh, community members. So basically, with this, we align it with a disaster profile from uh, the DOTMA department. Uh, basically, it's to identify which district is more prone, then we go into that district. So, and if you go into the district, it's not the whole district as well, because you find the district can have you know, different geographical settings. Some are lowlands, some are highlands. So we won't normally concentrate into those. Uh, well, it's, it's kind of tough when we're starting up, but uh, as time goes by, we got used to on how to do it. So the best practices were to get a number of people involved. All right, everyone should be in the same footing. You should know exactly what you want to do at what particular time. That's why we also conducted the trainings on how to use JOSOM, how to use QGS. So what, the lessons that we learned is that uh, if you want to do community mapping, everyone should know the basics probably on using the GIS softwares. What, what is done, what it, what it can do and what it cannot do. Then uh, you train the people on uh, using of GPSs and the like. And when you use the community, uh, actually you get uh, right information rather than if you do probably just desktop uh, mapping. So you can know the exact areas, how the extent of the floods and the like. So basically these have been some lessons we have learned from this project. So, so you say by using the community, you get an accurate, a more accurate assessment of where, how far the flood went than by. Yes. And and um, so, how big would a team be in every district? Sorry. How how big would be a community team be in a district? Is it like five people? people? No, <laughs> we'll go beyond that because some districts are big. We're about probably fifteen to twenty people. And, and can you give us an idea, because most many people don't know Malawi, what the size of such a district is? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll skip that. Well, well, yeah, that's a tough one to determine the size of the district. Like uh, square kilometers, no, I, ca I can't really say, because the district will be of different sizes. Yeah. So yeah. something... Yeah, he has another question about um, connecting with neighboring countries and the wider OSM community. Are there any plans to do that? Maybe for a regional map, um, since other other areas in the uh, other countries in the area are also affected by floods. Uh, honestly, we haven't thought of that yet. But uh, as the question has come, probably we can start thinking in those lines. Yeah, I think through the open streamer community once again, that's a that's a nice way of um, uh, talking or getting into contact. Yeah, with other people. Uh, I think um, the, those are the questions that we had. Now, my my list of questions is also um, uh, 
at the end I had a let me just see here I had a couple of questions here um, is there anything else you would like to share with us Dixon about uh, the community mapping the my stuff mm -hmm. come again something you want to share with us about the community mapping uh, <laughs> If you had to do this again, what would you do differently? If we had to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> the easy way from a hindsight. Yeah, probably uh, somebody asked about uh, using uh, what, what and I've just forgotten. Other. Yeah, using the satellite images, remote mapping. I think that that, that we can get, we can involve that basically. Uh, and uh, drones are coming into use now. So we'll probably mm -hmm. we use the drones as well for clear imagery. So mm -hmm. basically, we can move into those lines if we have to do it again. So if you say drones and satellite imagery, are you saying that eliminating all the logistics of involving people? Um, no, no, no. We, we can't. Those, those you can't eliminate. Because you need the community. You need the community to, to work with. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I understand. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, on Mazdaap, as I've already said, actually, what we are doing on Mazdaf is to get uh, special data from most of the uh, government institutions to upload the data that we can use, share it. Uh, basically, it's for projects, as I've already said. Uh, academics, if you want to carry out uh, some further studies with that, that's what we are doing. But it's, a, it's an uphill battle to get that data. But we are trying. So yeah. it's accessible to anyone. I hear there are some people outside there that they are also using it as a reference of study. So if you want to join, just send us the, the mail, then we'll allow you to use it. Yeah, I hear what you say about um, uh, it being difficult to get the data from government. I can uh, relate to that from our country. And I think that's like you said, that that is then the big benefit of using the open street map. So you can you can share the data and it's uh, all the tools and everything are available so that people can use it. Yes. Yeah. OK, if there are no other questions, then I think we're going to um, uh, end this session now. Thank you, Dixon, so much for a very um, interesting uh, talk and uh, yeah. for sharing your experiences. We wish you all the best uh, for the future. Hopefully um, this will have had some impact on the community so that the floods have less of, a, of an impact. Sure. Um, and so we'll take a break and then we'll be back uh, about 1745 UTC for the next presentation. Thank you. All right. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Dixon. Bye-bye.